All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drbeen.com. Welcome to one more show. So with me once again today is our own Paul Bork, who is a resident statistician and presenter for the stats for COVID. Paul, welcome. Thank you, Mubeen. Very, very glad to be here. Thank you very much and take it away. Thank you. So today we're going to talk about excess deaths and COVID stats, and uh, these are two separate subjects, And uh, but we people have been asking about the excess deaths for a while, and it took me a bit of time to get something that I thought might be useful for you all. So we're going to uh, go forward with that, and so we'll start with the uh, COVID stats and then the excess death at the end. Excellent. Thank you very much. And just for the cool beans, in my lap is... Kairi, she is not nowadays leaving me alone. Let me show you very quickly. And the, the reason I want to make you aware, if you see here, here is Kairi in my lap and my tea is here. Just want to make you aware that I am <laughs> I am just in this state. I will have to lean to the mic to speak. So with this, Paul, back to you. Thank you. So the first thing, uh, talk about... Uh, the world for the uh, variants, okay? And we have a very different picture than uh, some people might think. And each country is radically different here. And uh, you can see here's the United States and the amount of the purple, which is the XBB variant is uh, projected by the US or told by the US government to the uh, our, the, the, our world in data as 49%. And keep in mind that these numbers uh, are not the percent of the illness that one has in each country. These are the percent of the new cases. The U.S. collects it for a whole week. And so for the week, this is where we have. And then we can talk a little later about the now cast where they're projecting forward because they're taking time to... Uh, to get the numbers and then they're projecting or extrapolating from the data that's uh, about a month old to uh, fill in the uh, weeks that follow that. I don't know if the other countries are doing the same thing. I would imagine it is somewhat the same. But these are the best numbers that we have here and you can see that there's significant difference. You know, we've got uh, here 36% of uh, in, in uh, the US and it's 70, 80%. And so, Fortunately, we're not seeing any difference that I'm hearing of in the uh, treatment or in the severity of the illness. So these different uh, variant classifications are uh, somewhat um, uh, you know, unimportant. Just like inside a given variant like Omicron BA4, there are uh, thousands or tens of thousands of different variants, but they're all classified together. You know, every time someone gets infected, you get different variants and just minor changes, but they're grouped together. And then they're grouped together under the um, uh, who wanting to, to designate them with Greek letters, Omicron and whatever, uh, a, a bigger classification. And then it's the SARS-CoV-2. And so this was actually my question as well. I'm sure that many of the cool beans would have this question too, that is XBB causing more cases, causing relatively more, God forbid, severe cases and deaths, or is it at par with its parents or with its other variant brethren and sisters? Well, uh, I, I, from what I've heard, is it, it's pretty much on par, par, which means that the variation among the, you know, inside the folks that were affected with a different variant group uh, they, they're not seeing a difference as it goes forward. It doesn't mean that it isn't a little bit more or less virulent. And I think that as time goes by and as the, uh, the um, COVID variants are being pressured to compete with each other, if they're trying to compete in terms of being able to infect people, it would make sense that the virulence would go down even if the virulence being Decrease does not increase the uh, infectability. And you can't have you can't major in two things at once. You know, just like most football teams, whether it's soccer or football, you, you either have a strong defense, a strong offense. You tend not to have a team that has both because 
that some things that you do to try to improve one of the aspects tends to decrease the other. Got it. Thank you very much. Now I am going to stop this and jump over to, let's see if I can, this is the one I want. Here. And I have actually one more question. So while you are working on this one, if I can seed that, uh, the XBB15 has been in the US at least from October 10, according to CDC and according to Europe, October 20. But only recently it started becoming more dominant. Why? Uh, that's always true. Yeah. Uh, they al it always takes um, a long time for the variants to come through. I mean, that's what we're, that's what we're sort of hearing from the um, Chinese and about Italy at the beginning of it. Oh, you know, see, three months before, six months before, we found some samples. And the question comes up, did the... Chinese secret agents, just like the U.S. and and Great Britain, everybody has secret agents, and if something's important for the country, they can go do stuff that you and I don't hear about or can't know. But it may also have been that it was going around. And it also could be that it failed. I mean, if this is a release from a lab, let's assume that there's a lab playing with this or intentionally, there could be a release four or five times, and none of the other ones took off. Got it. Thank you and very much. So here I have... And let me go ahead. very quickly answer Phoenix. Phoenix said, Dr. Bean, very lectures. Thank you for your work. I have a question for you and others. Are the vaccines transmissible through sex, bodily fluids, whether protected and especially unprotected sex? So there has been no study yet that showed mRNA or vaccine-generated spike in the semen, semen or seminal fluid or prostatic fluids. However, mRNA has been seen in mother's, uh, uh, breastfeeding mother's milk. So if that is possible, it may be possible. So this is my conjecture. There is no study. There is no evidence. If it is possible that the milk contains the mRNA, then sweat can contain an mRNA as well because breast milk is, or breast tissue is modified sweat glands. However, going back to evidence, there is no evidence of this. Back to you, Paul. Yeah, we've heard that question several times over the years. There must be some source or concern that people have with that to have that question keep coming up. That is correct. I have actually talked about it. I talked about it one and a half year ago and YouTube actually uh, took it down. And then I reached out to YouTube saying, what the heck, this is a normal standard discussion to have. I don't know if they put that back up or not, but this is a very... Uh, right. And that may have to deal with the, the inactivated polio vaccine that tends to have some disease cause or, or pass through that could infect other people, which is a completely different vaccine for a completely different infection done differently. But but people are very concerned, I think. So yeah. you now see pretty much the same thing, but I'm going to animate this and take you through, and you can see how the variants for these countries picked. And I kind of picked some countries we know, but also for ones where there was diversity in the... Uh, so this is not a random selection, but sort of to show the, the different variants. And it will go, this will go back to the beginning and show them over time going through. And you can see the countries are, you know, there's periods where everyone's, all the countries are infected with the same thing, but not very much. You know, here at the beginning, we have the original or the Wuhan variant, and it's going along and it's going along as we jump up. And these change in order and some of the, the, the countries disappear because they may not have been reporting any variants for that time. And so they disappear from the graph. And here we have the UK, and this is when the alpha started. And they're the first country here that had something be besides the uh, Wuhan. And here they're up to 79%. The U.S. is still 99% and just uh, pulling in, what is it here, for the uh, 1%. And we see yeah, France has, um, uh, what is this? This is... Uh, well, it isn't even showing up, but that would be the BA1 uh, 
here that's coming in. And here in South Korea, we have uh, the, the gamma as half a percent that don't, don't show up elsewhere. And as we as we move through this, you can see variant various uh, countries having significantly different. I mean, right here, the UK has 93% uh, Delta. The US is only at 30%. You know, Germany is at 30%, but has 62% out, uh, excuse me, 29% Delta and 61% uh, Alpha. And so you can see these, the, the diseases are progressing very different in these different countries. And then we get uh, the, when the, the Delta here ended up taking over pretty well, but you can see here in South Korea, they still had a third of their new cases, not, you know, a third of their new cases were um, it's, like it's BA4. It's not showing up here. They're, they're marking it as other because it wasn't known as BA4 at the time, but you can see up in the key at the top. And as, as we go forward, we, we have significantly different reaction. And if we looked at a more diverse picture of the world, we would see that again, it's not one pandemic, it's a group of pandemics or epidemics that are going on with significantly different things. And here we end up with um, where we started. So if I pull that back over here, put that on top, present again. And then we go to that screen, which has the shortcut. And if we look at the CDC, their breakdown in the 10 uh, regions that the CDC is using, you can see, again, we have the same sort of thing that we had in the countries. Each region is significantly different. And inside the regions, there's going to be huge differences. If you're at the city, you're not in the city. And I have, if we go forward a little bit, I did a little more editing and emphasized, it's the same picture as before, but emphasizing the color for the XBB. You can see here, uh, these two are the same at 71.6 for region one and region two. But if we run over to... Uh, Region eight here at 6.6% .6 or 5% in region seven. And so we have significantly different uh, progression of the diseases going forward. And here's another picture with uh, taking a look at the BQ11. And because of the percentage of the um, uh, BXX, uh, the BQ1 is lower here in these two regions and it's much higher, over essentially 50% in, every, in most of the rest, a third, and then uh, about 15%. And one of the things to keep in mind is these are not cases they're talking about. This is percentage of samples. So if the number of infections, I mean, it could be that every one of these is not likely, but every one of these regions could have the same per number of people, per percentage of the population affected with BQ1, but because the overall disease is higher or you have some other variant, the percentage that is found is different. And again, I'll, mention, I'll talk a little more detail about it, but the, these are the cases, new cases that are sequenced for a week. And that's, that's the number they're using, not taking a look at all at the folks that are already infected. So if there were a difference in treatment, the fact that uh 40 percent is the bq11 it may be that it's still only one percent of the people who are infected you know there's two di two different things the new infections coming in looking towards the future or are we looking at the people that are infected and we're trying to treat the people different questions for different and different answers with it uh as we go through this let me show zoe used to have this slide that we saw over and over and over again, well, they've updated theirs. And I found that they had a list and the last one they have are 30 days before December 5th. And they're saying that these are the symptoms and they're not thinking that they change very much. And these are underlined because they're a shortcut in the thing I copied from and I didn't reformat it.
Now here we have uh, the CDC uh, and they have a little heading in their thing that shows the overall picture, okay? And I prepared this talk and then um, we came, we de delayed it until Friday and the new data came out for the CDC. So I went and I picked it up. And so this is last week and that's just this week that just came out today. And so let's just take a look at what the CDC is reporting. I'm not second guessing everything they're doing, but we have, I have two weeks, consecutive weeks here. And you can see their arrow is shows up, and this is 0.5% difference. You know, 100,000 cases or 101 or 100.6 and 101 is half a percent difference. And they have a significant up arrow. I, think, I would think it would be flat, but okay. Then we have the deaths, and these are total deaths. And of course, you're not going to, hopefully, we don't have a significant shift in the deaths. But if we take a look at the difference here, Again, it's 0.3, and this may be total cases that they're reporting, and they're talking about the trend, the change, and the increment. So again, it can be, but the number they're reporting and the, the graph aren't quite the same. And here they have the current hospitalizations that are up 16%, and we have a little bitty arrow. We don't have a big arrow. So I think if you're looking at the CDC is probably good to go and look at the data and not just rely on the getting a general feel of, of, of well-being or what risk is by how their arrows are drawn because it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. And we're interested in people getting their updated booster. We had a 2% increase from 15.1 to 15.4% during the last week. Any questions? So far, so good. Thank you very much. Okay, and here's the CDC's big page that I've been focusing on where they talk about the very variants and they've got the whole list of them here. If you try to compare one week to another, they change the order that they do it and everything. And keep in mind, we now have this yellow circle, three weeks of nowcast, which means that they're collecting data, they're analyzing data, but they're not using the data for this. These are forecasts. And this is the week ending the 17th, which just came out today. So that's half a week old on average. And so we're three and a half weeks. So it goes between three weeks, three and a half weeks, um, three and a half weeks to four and a half weeks. And so we're a month behind in the real data. And so that would be the column here. The, the uh, December 17th is the last real data. These are just forecasts. And one of the questions people may ask is, well, how good are they in doing this? Because, you know, they've been getting data and they've been updating it. And certainly they've, they've trained there and, and, and uh, improved their um, mechanism and their, uh, to, to, to titrate it very closely and make sure they're predicting correctly. Well, if we take a look at the 17th, and this is what was when it was an outcast, which was last week. And this is where it turned out today. And it doesn't look all that really great correlation to me. And to help you analyze it, I took uh, each of these, I, I put them down here and I broke each one up and rotate it and put them, try, tried to get them all on this baseline or pretty close on the baseline. And so it's showing the subsequent weeks. The first one is the now cast and the second one is the real data. You can see for BA5, they were off by you know, was that 25%? BQ11, yeah, that looks a lot closer. BQ1 is off. BB1.5, significantly off here. This is the one that's really growing. And they got the BF7 pretty close, XBB pretty close, and it's starting to come back up. And on average, they will be there will be zero difference because both of them add up to 100%. So if BA5 is wrong, as, as low because they're inaccurate by 10%, something else is going to be high by 10% because it all has to add up to 100% here. And you can see some of these little ones, and, and some of these changed order. You know, these, these swapped place. I don't know why they're doing it, why they're swapping order and not leaving them in the same place. Uh, they're not listed by size. 
So I don't know why they're doing it. Uh, one might suggest they're trying to confuse people. I suggest, I don't think that's right. But why is the purple and the green swapped? Why are the, the two blues swapped here? You know, the orange is in about the same place and looks pretty close. So anyway, I just uh, took a close look at that. And I don't know what it really means. But just saying that if we see this happening over one week, if we go back to their forecast and we're now three weeks later and we have one week projected, a second week based on the first week, a third week based on the first week, and the first week really half a week old, are we compounding errors and are they more off here? I would just say be, be careful about taking the now cast as being accurate. A, a number of the... Um, press accounts that I've read um, talk about it, and they usually say something about it being a now cast, but then just assume it's completely accurate about what's going on. And then we also have, keep in mind that these are averages that just as we talked about, and each region and each state and each city or area in the state are going to be significantly different. Does that all make sense? Any questions? So far, so good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Now we'll go to sewage. Sewage, sewage. Yeah, if people ask about sewage. Uh, this is the one that I had before, the last time I presented a long time ago. And just you can see what this looks like. And remind you that these are the locations that are taken. And I highlighted New York City because look how many samples are taken in little New York City. I mean. It's bigger than some things, but it looks like they've got, what, most of the same numbers in Florida or maybe two-thirds as much as Georgia, more than in Texas, certainly more than Utah. So, again, these are put together, and they're just they are not trying to represent the United States. They're just trying to represent the um, – represent where uh, – you know, where, where they are on average, because these are groups that have gone up more than 100%. And then they have, oh, this went down 100%. Well, if it went down 100%, it has to go to zero, right? <laughs> There's going to be almost no one that goes to zero, right? And so while it sounds like they have equal categories, they really don't. The logic is there's almost no one that will ever be in the decrease. And the large increase can occur very easily that if you, you know, you had you know, a, a low sample, and then you had two people, you know, let, let's say you had one person that was shedding virus into a city, and then a second person came, that'd be a 100% increase, and it jumped way down here. Or, you know, so again, this, this may be useful for some things, but I don't know that it really is that useful overall. And the number coming down here, you can see the number is uh, of people that aren't reporting is way down. Um, I don't see, there was another later one I had and the number, this curve was coming further down, but the historical place didn't. So I think these are just late reports, not people opting out of the system. Again, it, thank you. people ask about it and they talk about it, but it's like, you know, if you're living in Chicago or New York, it may represent you quite well, but most other places, not so much. Now we can go to the okay. COVID. Okay, before that, I want to show the audience. We have a few hundred people. I want to show you the the the. I want to show you Kyrie. Check this out. She is sitting here in my lap, and she has been sitting here since the morning. Let me actually increase this. So she's been sitting here since the morning here, and every time I try to type or use this mouse she starts licking my hands grooming them so that is my life today back to you paul i'm gonna okay. bring your screen back up denise uh, no she's fine but she just has decided that luffy is out and why not i occupy this territory Sorry, well, Luf Luffy's accepting her, pushing her, her, him out, right? <laughs> yeah, Luffy's outside. Oh, yeah. So here we have the curve from the day. These are daily new cases of COVID. 
And there's a similar curve that show the number of infected, but they tend not to report both at the same time. And this is on a two-day delay. They said they're using CPR and lateral flow. And this is from the app that people are reporting. The number of people infected in the UK, they say, is 3,349,000, whatever. And if we take a look, it's, this, it's starting to come over just a little bit. And so if I take this downward slope that we had the last time and repeat and put that slope on everything else, it looks like this curve, if there's nothing showing this curve is not going to be, it's going to be inconsistent with that decrease. These two curves came down much, much faster. This one came down about the same rate and this one was about the same rate. So whatever is happening with the transmittal um, and the, uh, of COVID, on these two decreases and this one, these three, it's hap it's seen, it, it may be likely that it's occurring right here. If we look at the increases that are occurring here, and we've done this before, these are all pretty much the same. This is a little steeper, you know, steeper here, but the curves coming up are, these two are fairly close. And so while the height may be different, we're seeing that, and, and these curves came higher and came down faster, but, and so if the curve came up and then came down at this rate, you may have the same number of people or uh, close to the same number of people, but just more spread out. These two peaks that were up at uh, four and a half million, uh, four, what's, uh, four, three quarters million um, people infected, um, were just people that got infected much faster. It spread faster, and then it seems to have saturated and came down very quickly. And so it may be that for each of these variants, there's a certain amount of slag, a certain number of people that can get infected, and then uh, something similar to uh, herd immunity comes in and the disease can't progress anymore. And the reason I say that, if you look at the next slide here, this is the one I've added the balls to it. You can see that it's not that something else came in right away to take over. It was fairly flat for a while, you know, and, and the height changed, but we're having roughly the same. And if we take this one peak out where something came in, we have roughly the same uh, space between each of the upward trends. So whatever is happening to prepare, you know, the population or the, or the, the, the virus getting ready and proceeding, going through, growing up until it reaches a, a certain uh, threshold to be able to, to, to spread better. It may be that if a person is exposed to just one person with a variant, that they're not as likely to get it than someone who gets two or three or four um, at once. If we take a look, these three seem to have something occurring down here, you know, sort of a, a hesitation, not just a down and up. And I don't know what it is, but something is going on. And th this is not just a random data thing. This, there's something going on with the virus and infection that's causing this. I'm sure someone will write a PhD thesis and explain that someday in the future. And then take a look at what the baseline is, the low end. What we saw, what we just saw is the same as what it was right before Omicron came. And here, these baselines are roughly the same. And this one was, was a little lower, but it seems to be showing that no matter what's going on, we're gonna have at least a million people in the UK that are infected seems to say go back and forth. And so again, is that a reinfection? Is it, what is it? I don't know, but it seems that they're not getting close to, to passing the uh, a million cases in the downward trend as we go forward. Now I have a new concept uh, that I, I think I've mentioned before, but haven't talked about very much is there's a, we can get a rough indication of the clearance time or the amount of time it takes to clear a infections through the cycle. If we go back 
right here is at the peak. If we do it at a peak or a trough where the slope is flat here and we're not increasing or decreasing, we can kind of take the ratio of the total infected by the number that are infected daily and come up with a rough idea of how many days it takes to generate that many infected people. Now, this, this is only useful relative looking one to the other because everyone doesn't have the disease at the same time. Some have long COVID and some have very long COVID and some have a very quick case. But if we take a look at this um, and we get this rough clearance time that comes in when the uh, R value is one, so the number of infections is stable for a moment. Last time I looked at it, the clearance time was about 10 days and today it's about 15 days. And so is that meaning that these, um, the new Omicron cases are lasting longer? Does that mean that uh, the people reporting to the Zoe app are reporting being sick longer? Does it mean that, you know, what does it mean? Does it mean that not as many people are reporting sick and then they, you know, for a given time? I, I don't know. But, it's, but there is a change, it's a 50% change, and it's not clear if it's just a reporting change or an actual disease change or what's going on with that. Any thoughts? I'm just listening to you and talking with Kairi. <laughs> <We're good>. Sorry. <laughs> That's fine. If we look at the rate of mutation, this is the next strain. I've taken out their, uh, the line and the uh, connections here. But you can see the slopes that we have here. The purple lines are all the same. We seem to have inside each of these uh, groupings. I pulled them together to show you what the colors are because um, if you go to next strain, they simply say it's 20B or whatever and you have to dig a bit to figure out what the name of the, of the variant is in the system that other folks are using. We take that slope and put it down here for, for the year 21 to the end, we're getting 15 mutations a year. That's the rate inside each of them, but they seem to be stepping up each time as they go forward. That when a new variant comes out, not every time, but for a lot of them, it appears that the there's a, an upward trend that there's a lot of vari a lot of variation or mutation occurs, and then it becomes essentially the new strain or group of strain. And and these groups, Paul, these are just the variations within the variation, or yes. So what is these, these are dots? within? So everything that's a superb blue color is all the same, called the same variant. Obviously, they're not exactly the same because there's changes. Yeah, you know, they look. Yeah, they're, daughters. They're, slightly different. Or they came from someplace else. Because does anyone mm -hmm. really believe that we had uh, this variant here with uh, 40, uh, 48 uh, mutations that then led to this one that had 30? No, no one thinks it oh, mutated back to what it was. There's, there's no way the virus would know what it was. And this, this is an arbitrary point when the Wuhan virus was first sequenced. You know, how many changes occurred in the year before that or six months yeah. before that or you know, from the time the first person was infected until they got the sample that they did. And so, so they, these are just arbitrary. But we're seeing, and so what happened here with this one is apparently the this, uh, uh, this variant here, there were other things going along that were lower that weren't sequenced. And then this one happened to get grabbed. And so right. there's, there's a whole cloud here and we're just taking a sample out of the cloud. And something that you talked about as well is they said they have 35,000 samples at one point and they can only put, you know, 3,000 in their diagram. So, so these, these are not representing all, but so hopefully they're representative. And we can see from all of these going forward, it looks like we're getting the same basic mutation. We're not seeing that this is accelerating. We're getting more and more mutations that we're getting the vaccine and it's causing greater environmental stress and we're getting faster, whatever, or, oh, the Omicron is horrible because it's doing, no, none of that seems to be, it looks like the disease is just sort of moving along. And um, yeah. And very quickly, Joel, happy birthday. Back to you, Paul. <laughs> I saw Joel's birthday today. 
Okay. okay. Happy birthday. And I'm going to jump back and I'm going to try. I'm going to show another live one here. There it goes. And I'll move it through here. And if I play this, you'll see. see them coming in. And over here, we have the countries and the size of the graph shows the number of infections, relative number. But you can see as it goes forward, the different countries, you see Australia and New Zealand were involved early on. Then they raised their barriers, beat it back. China was involved early on. And then they decided that they had a different approach. And you can see as the disease progresses along here. And this is the same graph we had before, except now we're just getting the time function on it. We'll get start getting some colors in in just a minute. By the way, Paul, people are really liking your presentation. Thank you oh. very much for this. Thank you. Very nice to hear that. And I am looking at 637 people are watching. So you are popular. Well, thank you. Happy that I can share. And that people appreciate it. You can think about what you were doing and these things going on. You can look at the different different countries and the way different variants that we have here. That one's almost all purple. Now, and Australia has no purple. It's all blue. And see, Australia is still a big size side here. And as you're watching that, again, they emphasize the point here is whatever is going on, we don't, I don't really understand, but there's no reason for uh, people to get excited and think things are going to change drastically for the worse or that the, the vaccine pressure is causing real issues or we're getting a new pandemic coming out of China or anything like that. You know, it looks like it's just percolating along. Everything I've heard says that the people, some people are going to get seriously ill. Some people are going to die. Some people are going to get minor ill. Some people are not even going to know they had it, just like before. But it looks like the disease is just progressing and continuing. And we're having a reinfection of people, at least some people. And maybe the reinfections are less severe than what the original was. I know from my personal experience with it, it seems like each time I get it, it is uh, significantly less severe. So you've been to the post office as well? Not the post office. <laughs> so, so for the Actually, uninitiated? I, 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 I went visiting a, a, a sick friend at, uh, at a hospital that had a Gillen's bar, nice. and uh, she was tested while we were there. It's like, okay. I see. I see. But yes, it's a similar thing. You know, you go and you do something you don't you're not planning on going out and being exposed. Yeah. But it happens. Yeah. Okay. So for so. the new folks here who are listening, this is a running joke in this channel that once I picked up COVID in the post office by accidentally licking a pen. So we always say that please don't go to post office or especially don't lick pens there. Now, here's some that some of you have asked about that might be very interesting. This is the next strain for flu. And you see, I've cut it off because they go back a long ways. This is the same amount of time as what we had with um, this one. You can see the amount of variation and everything we've had here. Again, don't worry about the zero, but just you know how much change and, and how it's stepping and causing... And look here with the flu, we have these two variants of groupings and it looks like they're just proceeding along. And again, it would I can't really tell whether this blue one is flat and this one is sloping up or not, but it looks like it's continuing along at the same rate consistently. And that's just what we're seeing with COVID. But significantly different approach, but the same idea that you're seeing the same variation over time. And again, same period of time. 
Now, now we're going to talk about excess deaths. And this has been a difficult thing for me to find any decent data on. Um, John Campbell and some others have talked about excess deaths uh, based on uh, life insurance companies and some other things. And just rehashing what was already said didn't seem very useful to me, so I didn't do that. But I did go, and the OECD is, uh, which is the organization of, uh, what is the OECD? Anyway, it's a group of uh, very developed nations, uh, broader than the, the NATO defense. is more of an economic grouping today. And um, so they rated their countries here on excess deaths, and this is for uh, 2022, okay? And I'll just quickly give you the overview, then we'll look in more detail. The, the, this is the average, so over the whole year, this is the average amount of excess deaths that each country has. So when you say this is, there are multiple parts in this graph. Where are you? Right, Which... this, the, the one right here. Oh, I'm sorry. I see my cursor. I didn't turn the laser pointer on. Okay, thank you. This, this one right here is for countries. This is showing countries, and it's the average over the year. This is, this is showing the months as we go by and putting all of the countries together. Hmm. Okay. Now we'll look at each graph blown up. Hmm. And this one has the name, and you can go pick your favorite country out. And for our purposes, it doesn't matter what OECD is. They're a group that collect data on these countries, and this is just reporting excess deaths for these countries. That's all the relevance of OECD is for this particular graph. And you can see Sweden, that had a different approach, seems to have done remarkably well compared to the other countries. And Chile seems to have done particularly poorly. Is this because Chile is at higher elevation and they have more lung impact or the lungs are more stressed there? I don't know. You see the United States is right here. New Zealand actually had more, even if they've been sheltering. Australia had more, even though they've been sheltering. Iceland. So, uh, sorry, uh, Paul, the vertical axis, what does that depict? This, these are, this is the percentage of excess deaths compared to what the five-year pr projection would have been. COVID deaths are not subtracted out. This is total. This is just looking at deaths. This is OECD. They're not a medical group. They're simply reporting on all kinds of economic things. And one of the things they report okay. on are deaths and excess deaths. So decode for me, for example, United States. The number seems to be about 16-ish. What right. does that mean? So the U.S. Uh, this 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 year, or the 20, 2022, Three. I think it was, well, okay. they had 16% more total deaths in the United States than the five-year average going back for the United States. Got it. And I have one more question, which is a very common question. So there are many folks who have been saying that these excess deaths are all because of vaccines. Have you seen any such data for or, or against? Well, I, we can answer that question, and we will in just a minute. Okay, I will wait. We, we, we can think that there is some because Sweden had a completely different approach to, and, and just allowed people to get exposed naturally. And is that the reason? But again, this is this year. Did Sweden have more deaths years ago? And, and it just hasn't. And everyone else is catching up. This is just a surface analysis. I, I didn't get that information. I couldn't see where. So this is for 2022. Yes. Okay. So this does not include 21, and of course, 23 just started. Right. And so this was the latest data I had to talk about what's going on. And um, I couldn't find, in the brief time I had to look, uh, OECD looking for 2021 or 2020. But what happens is, as these numbers are higher than zero, it means the, the average lifespan of the country would be decreasing. And if they're below zero, then the average lifespan will be increasing. Now, is this because people didn't get to go and get their cancer diagnosed and they didn't go and take their medicine for something else? Or is this because they were locked down and they 
had a fight with someone or their, their tension went up because they were a, weren't able to go to work or whatever. I have no way of knowing any of that. We can all surmise whatever we want to with it. We can see the countries going forward here. I mean, Italy was considered really horrible in terms of having COVID for a while and their numbers, you know, they're on the upper half of the OECD on it. And Latvia and Belgium, both close together. I mean, and Czech Republic, I would think if you were looking for health economic terms, you wouldn't have these three right together. Hmm, interesting. Now, this is the other graph. We have the same percentage change. This, this, is, this, is, this, this is exactly the same graph, but I made points so I could put a trend line through it, okay? And it says this decrease accounts for 86% of the variation. We have Sweden down here and we have Chile up here. The rest of them seem to be progressing as if something is changing across going forward. And there's almost no two countries that are the same. I mean, here are two, but, but it almost always is decreasing. Something is changing country by country by country. And we go back to the list of them. You know, how is Norway and, and Germany, you know, Austria and Germany being identical? I mean, okay, Netherlands a little higher, uh, Spain, Portugal, somebody's favorite country. Canada, Finland, you know, wh wh why are these countries doing this? I don't know that there's a vaccination rate that, that follows that or anything else. But again, we have 86%, which is a, a pretty darn good curve. But this, these are ranked in turn. I, I sorted them according to their rank. And so part of this is because I sorted them according to their rank. It wasn't that we took uh, neighboring countries or something, or we, or we took the vaccination rate to sort them. That could be done at a later date, and hopefully someone will take a look and, and come up with something. Then the other graph that we had was putting all the countries together for each of the weeks. And our R squared is um, essentially zero, showing there is no time shift for this. That over the entire 2022, Time accounts for um, less than two tenths of a percent of the change is consistent with time. So there's a question from Ruby. She says, uh, "Higher than usual? Why?" So I don't have the full context for this question. Is that about excess deaths or something else? But I suppose it is for excess deaths. We don't know. I mean, there's lots of things that people have talked about. I mean, one of the things that I found surprising is when the United States had their Operation Desert Storm and Desert Shield, they actually saved lives of the servicemen. People were and, and women were killed by the Iraqis fighting them, but more would have died from being drunk or driving or whatever. So um, this is the same kind of thing. Uh, COVID is out killing people, okay? Is it killing this many? I don't think it's killing this many before. And again, mm -hmm. this is just looking at overall deaths versus the reported deaths. I did not mm -hmm. go in to say, okay, is this the over 70s? Is this the 50 to 70 group? You know, is this because we have... Okay, so um, the is not there. You just look at the cumulative excess. Got it. Thank you. Right. And they may have that. But for example, some people are saying, well, we have a lot more little kids dying percentage-wise. Not many kids, but percentage-wise, because they weren't exposed to the infectious diseases early on in life, and they're getting them together and whatever. Well, there may be some of that. Okay, this is just looking overall, and we're looking at an overall country for a dot, and we're looking at the overall age. And so, again, this is just the very beginning of a real analysis to look at this. But it's saying that there is a slight upward slope, but it is essentially zero, and there is no time effect. And so the fact that we stopped giving vaccines over most of the OECD would seem to say that um, if, it's, if this is vaccine-induced, it's a long-term vaccine. It's not something that happens in the first six months or three months or two days after a vaccine. Otherwise, we'd see it drop off. So again, I can't, I, I can't say- Do you want to hear a fun question? 
<laughs> so GG says, could massive decrease in vaccination this fall lower the excess deaths in 2022? So I don't know this fall has anything to do with the 2022, but I, I assume you're saying so, massive that, decrease in vaccination in the fall of 2022. So anyways. That, that, be, but, mean, but again, this is what this is the sort of data that people will use 10 years from now or five years from now to say, absolutely, the vaccine had an effect. No, the vaccine didn't have an effect because you're going to take data like this and put it next to vaccination rates and, and do a time study and see which age group got which vaccines. And right now, th this, this one graph simply says it doesn't, this graph doesn't show that there's any effect due to vaccines. You know, if, if it were, we would tend to see that if there was a, With if vaccines. Two vaccines now, we would tend to have a downward sloping curve. And again, less than 0.2% of the thing is, 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 is by time. So it's saying there is no effect. So anything that takes place Thank over you. time isn't, isn't causing these deaths. So if we're looking for it, as some people have called for an investigation to figure out why we're getting all these excess deaths, anything that, took, that changed over the year, you can just throw that away because that isn't what's happening. There's something else that's occurring. Hmm. Excellent. Thank you very much. And that's the end. Excellent. I'm going to show one more time. Kyrie sitting with me. So here is Kyrie. <laughs> hey, Kyrie, how are you? So she's been sitting here throughout this whole. And I keep the blanket on because if, if the blanket is not there, she just digs into my legs and scratches them. So anyways, sorry for the camera change so back not, here thank you very much paul you're quite welcome not, not at all it's always good to see your kylie and, uh, I think we should do sometimes a deeper discussion about the excess deaths and the vaccines roles or covid's role or just in general excess deaths uh, this is a topic that uh, is spoken in so many ways and uh, some stretch it all the way towards conspiracies some stretch it all the way towards say hey, nothing to see here so i would like uh, actually to have a deeper dive into this if possible at some point yeah I, I can i can take a look at it i mean one of the things that we can we can do as the next step is take that data and take a look at uh, vaccine rates and sort the countries based on deaths and vaccine and see how much they correlate we can also Got take it. a look at uh, certain age groups where uh, COVID has been more significant in deaths and see if, if that makes a difference. But um. Got it. And so one last announcement I want to do. So if give me one second. Cool beans who are watching. I have this Dr. Beans link. I don't think it is in the description of this video or it may be i'm going to put it back here this is the we used to sell and we still sell this dr bean's access on drbean.com for my medical lectures for 67 dollars for youtube members normally it was 97 then my team has advised us that we should change the pricing it looks different low gives a bad perception so we are changing it to courses so in another i believe mid january or near the end of january we'll be rolling out course based uh, dr bean uh, plans and so this is the last few weeks that if you would like to have access to these lectures we'll grandfather you in afterwards this does not get you cmes you can buy cmes separately However, you, this gets you in the Dr. Bean Club for, for as long as we survive, <laughs> so as long as we are doing business. So with this, thank you very much. I just wanted to share this. This link I, I, I've is, gotten that and taken a look, and some of the videos are very, very well done, just like your normal presentations. Excellent. Thank you very much. So I, I put the link in the comments as well. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend. Paul, thank you very much for your work. It actually gives me a chance to sit down with Kyrie and drink my tea. So, <laughs> so thank you. And uh, please like, subscribe, and share.
And if you would like to support this work, there are some links in the description. You can do them or you can just get access to drbeing.com. Thank you very much and bye for now. Thank you, Paul. You're quite welcome.